In the last video, we looked at this series here, and we saw that it's not geometric or arithmetic. I also explained how to write this fraction in terms of its partial fractions. So what we will do in this video is look at terms of this series by using this form instead of this form. So we have a half into sigma r equals 2 to n of this expression here. So we start off with 2, we plug 2 in for r, and we get 1 over 2 minus 1, which is 1, minus 1 over 2 plus 1, which is 3. And then we add on to that the second term, which is got by replacing r with 3. So I explained all this in the first video. We put 3 in for r now, so we get 1 over 3 minus 1, it's 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3 plus 1, it's 1 over 4. So this term corresponds to r equals 2, not 1, it actually starts at 2. This term corresponds to r equals 3, so we keep increasing r by 1. This term corresponds to r equals 4, so we put 4 in for r, we get 1 over 4 minus 1, it's 1 over 3, minus 1 over 4 plus 1, 1 over 5. Um, I'll write down another one. Actually, you can see the pattern now. We don't even have to keep plugging values of r in here. There is a pattern. Look at the denominator of the first fraction in each term. We have 1, 2, 3. So the denominator of the first fraction here should be 4. And if you plug 5 in here, that's what you'll get. You get 1 over 5 minus 1, or 1 over 4. Um, if we look at the denominators of the second fraction in each term, we have 3, 4, 5. They're increasing by 1, so the denominator in this second fraction, this term, should be 6. Um, so we could keep writing them out now. We don't have to refer to this. We could see the next term is actually 1 over 5 minus 1 over 7, and so on. And we keep going, so I'll continue on to the next line so I can have some room here. And we would keep going to the last term, which is got by replacing r with n. 1 over n minus 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. So this would be the last term. This would correspond to r equals n. And after that, we look for we can look for a pattern. Now, Actually, to see that pattern more clearly, I'm going to write out not just the last term, but say the third last term and the second last term. I'm going to write out the third last term, which is got by replacing r with n minus 2. So if we do that, we have 1 over n minus 2 minus 1, which is n minus 3, minus 1 over n minus 2 plus 1. So we get n minus 1 here. Then the second last term is got by replacing r with n minus 1. Or if you like, we can just add 1 onto this denominator here. 1 plus n minus 3 is n minus 2. And we add 1 onto this denominator here. 1 over n minus 1 plus 1 is n. Finally, the last term is got by replacing r with n. So that's 1 over n minus 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. Now, of course, we can ignore all the brackets because we're just dealing with addition and subtraction. So we can add all these numbers any way we like. So we have minus a third plus a third. That gives 0. We have minus a quarter plus a quarter. That gives 0 as well. We have minus a fifth plus a fifth. They cancel out. So most of this series will actually cancel out. As a matter of fact, if you look carefully here, we'll see that the second part of each term cancels with the first part of the term that is two terms ahead of this term. Um, we see the second part of this term here, the r equals 3 term, cancels with the first part two terms ahead. So the second term here, in this term, cancels with the first term 
first part of the term that's two terms ahead. So these two terms won't cancel with anything because there's nothing there's nothing two terms ahead of them. Although let's just make sure of that. Well, not this term, but this term here won't cancel with anything. But this term here will cancel with the second part of the term just previous to this one here. So this will ac actually cancel out. These will cancel out, of course. And this here will cancel out with the second part of a term that's two terms behind. So the second part of each term cancels with something that's ahead of it. That's two terms ahead of it. So there's nothing two terms ahead of this term. And there's nothing two terms ahead of this term. So they won't cancel out with anything. Everything else will cancel out at the start except for 1 plus a half. So the whole series collapses down to this expression here. 1 plus a half minus 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. And of course we have to multiply by this factor of a half that's in front. Now I'm not going to write everything in here as a single fraction. I'm not going to bother. I'll only simplify by adding 1 and a half. I'll just leave it like this. Now as a check, let's calculate this sum. R equals 2 to 4. So n equals 4. So we plug 2 in for R. So we have 1 over 2 squared minus 1. That's 1 third. Plus, then we plug in 3 for R. So we have 1 over 3 squared minus 1. That's uh, 8. And then we plug... 4 in, so we have 1 over 4 squared minus 1. That's 1 over 15. This gives 0 0.525. Now, let's use the expression that we just worked out with n equals 4. So we have a half into 1 and a half minus 1 over 4 minus 1 over 4 plus 1. And hopefully this also gives us 0.525. This does check out. Now, that proves that it's very, very likely that this is the correct answer. It would be highly unlikely if, if this thing worked out, say, for n equals 4 and turned out to be false for other values of n. I should mention that from the previous video where we saw that the partial fractions of 1 over r squared minus 1 is a half over r minus 1 minus a half over r plus 1. Okay, if I bring the half in here, we have a half above the line for both of those fractions. This can be written as 1 over 2 times r minus 1 minus 1 over 2 times r plus 1. Okay, just multiply above and below by 2. We can check this on Wolfram Alpha. All you do is just type in the words partial fractions followed by the single fraction. And here's the result. As a matter of fact, we can do the entire problem. We want to sum 1 over r squared minus 1 from r equals 2 to n. That's our original problem. The version that we get out here is written as a single fraction. As a matter of fact, if you want to check to see if this thing is right, we don't have to gather it all up into a single fraction by getting a common denominator and then going to Wolfram Alpha. What we can do is just simply click on this and we can then go and see its partial fractions. So this is our input, but if I just type partial fractions in front of this, I can break this down just to check it against what we have. So here's what we get. These are the partial fractions. If we take out this factor of 2 in the denominator, we'll get exactly what we have, which is this thing here. Now I'm going to leave it in this form here because I want to look at another question. Suppose we want to calculate this sum here, sigma r equals 2 to infinity of 1 over r squared minus 1. Well, we just let n go to infinity. And what would happen to this? We get a half into 1 and a half. Well, this will go to 0. This will also go to 0. As n goes to infinity, as the denominator blows up, the 
these fractions both go to zero. So we have a half of one and a half, which is three quarters, 0.75. Of course, we can go back here and look at our sum from r equals two to some very large value. Can't put infinity in, of course, but we can imagine putting in a very large number. So I put in 100 here. The sum sigma r equals 2 to 100 of 1 over r squared minus 1 gives us a number that's actually very close to 0.75. We have a graph here, and a graph is approaching 0.75. If I let n equal 10,000, we get this value here. This looks very like 150 million divided by 200 million, or 15 over 20 which is three quarters. So we're practically at three quarters for a value of n equal to 10,000.